How's it going, everybody? This is Mr. Banone. Thank you for joining. This right here, I'm going to elaborate on how to use a base 10 strategy when you're trying to subtract. And actually, we're going to be counting up. I'll get into what that actually means. So, when we use base 10, usually kids draw a large square that represents 100. For 10s, it could be a rectangle like this or a small uh, line like that. Those represent tens. And then for ones, it could be a small circle or a small square. All right. Let's say I want to do the equation 152 minus 77. 152 minus 77. The first thing I have students do is label the equation to let me know what the numbers actually represent. In subtraction, the first number is the whole, the second is the part, because you have the whole, you take away a part, and you're trying to find out what that other part is. So, we're trying to find out what that other part is. Okay? So, we're going to use base 10 blocks. I had another video with using base 10 blocks, and then you're subtracting. Most kids are familiar with adding up whether it be on a number line but also with base 10 blocks as well so watch what i do when i say adding up we're starting from the part and we're adding up to get to the whole so first let me draw 77 like i said it doesn't have any hundreds in it so i'm going to draw seven tens and seven ones one for a lack of time i'm just going to draw the lines to represent 10 but 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 now i have to draw the one one two three four five six seven cool this is 77 right here now if i want to use base 10 blocks and i'm already familiar with adding up which most kids are then they can count up from 77 up to 152 so this is going to be my extra box over here, what I'm going to be adding up. So I already have 77. Hmm. Let me think. Can I add 100? That's going to be way too much. I'll get to 177. So I had to start adding some 10. I added 10. 77 plus 10 is 87. All right. I need to add another 10 so I can get closer to 152. I uh, add another 10, 97. All right, cool. What I'm going to do is add another 10, 107. I'm getting closer and closer. I add another 10. It's 117. I add another 10. That's 127. And let me underline what's actually changing, the 10 here. After you get to the, the three digit, then um, that changes every hundred. But I added one, two, three, four, five tens, 50 already. I'm almost at 127. Let me add another 10. 137. I'm going to add another 10. 147. Hmm. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Should I add another 10? If I notice the pattern, I'm going to realize it gets me to 157. That's past my hole. So I shouldn't be adding another 10. Should not. Do not do that. Instead, I'm going to start counting by ones to get up to 152. 148. 149. 150, 151, 152. All right, cool. So I made it to 152. The next thing I have to do is figure out what I just added on from 77 to get to 152. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Now I have the ones. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. And you see, kids can actually touch and count 
It brings another sense into it. So, 75 is actually the missing part. 75. Okay. Once again, this is using base 10 blocks, but not crossing out anything. You're counting up from the part up to the whole, and then whatever you're adding on is your other part. We do this on a number line also. There are multiple strategies, multiple representations. It's just whatever your child feels the most comfortable with and is the most effective with. So, just wanted to show you, this is what using base 10 blocks to count on, to subtract, but counting up to the whole. All right, this is Mr. Bonome. I hope this was insightful and it helped out.